Have you ever wished that you could be in a documentary? That you are interesting enough to be the subject that millions of people watch? Well, I wondered that, and, and that wish came true. I managed to get some early footage of an upcoming documentary that'll be released soon, and I figured that we could sit down together and take a look at it. Here, we observe a fascinating specimen of Homo sapiens, seemingly lost in contemplation. Note the deliberate positioning of a digit against the labial aperture, a gesture often employed during periods of intense cognitive processing. The digit retreats and a subtle shift in facial musculature suggests a nascent idea taking form. The eyes, previously unfocused, now possess a glimmer of purpose. It appears our subject is preparing to vocalize, to share its thoughts with the wider world. It's a fascinating display of cognitive processing unfolding in real time before our very eyes. The eyes narrow slightly, focusing intently on something just beyond the frame. This creature is clearly formulating a response. And now, a curious display. The creature presents a brightly colored artifact, a sponsor magnet, it's called, seemingly a key to attracting... Well, that was amazing, but I have a little secret to tell you. I made it all up. There was no film crew in my office. I made that in a few seconds, leveraging Gemma 3 27B, along with a voice from Eleven Labs. So let's take a look at how I made it. But first off, Gemma 3 is a multimodal model. It'll accept text and generate new text, but it will also accept images and generate text from that. Now, Gemma 3 was released on Olama a few weeks ago, but recently Olama fixed a problem with the API to now allow multiple images to be sent to a multimodal model. Here's a simple app I made to send a prompt and multiple images to the model. You can see how simple it is. Just reads the prompt, then adds each image to an array that sends all of that to the model and spits out the response. So let's ask it to write a story about these images. Old man Tiber hadn't left his small coastal town in decades. He'd seen the world once, a world Today, when tour he'd been particularly you. drawn to the jaguar. It lay sprawled in the shade, a magnificent creature trapped within a Milk, cage. Whole, yogurt, non-fat plain Greek, medium cheddar cheese. It went on. A litany of healthy a choices. Blue cylinder time. with R P W F E emblazoned on the side. Taking view he held of a glacier in, in Alaska. The sheer scale of it, the icy blue depths, the feeling of being utterly insignificant in the face of and nature's power. Sometimes all it took was a grocery list, a new water filter, and a memory of a distant glacier to see it. So that's fun, but I wanted to take it a little bit further. And I built another little test app to play with this feature based on a video I had seen a couple of years ago. Here's what the app looks like at a super high level. First, there's a simple CLI app written in Dino, which uses TypeScript. I actually created this in Windsurf, which made it with pretty much a single prompt with no back and forth. Unfortunately, Andre Karpathy came up with the incredibly stupid name of Vibe Coding for this process, but oh well. The actual interaction with the model, though, happens with N8N. For this specific app, I would not recommend doing it this way, for reasons that I'll highlight a little bit later. Now, to overcome some problems in N8N, I had to do some manual work, but even that was pretty easy, so we'll look back at that later as well. So to run it, I have a simple command, nml. This is a compiled version of my narrate my life ts file. So let's take a look at it. Now I am sure there's going to be someone asking why I didn't write the program in whatever their favorite language is. 
Now, it's always best if you write in the language you feel most familiar with. Any developer should then be able to read the code in any language and adapt it to their language. They may not be able to write a program in a different language, but most devs can read in any language and adapt. So up here at the top, I set some configuration variables. For instance, I optimize and resize the JPEGs after capturing them. I was hoping to make it faster, but this actually made very little difference. And then I have a function to take a picture using the laptop's camera. This uses a CLI tool called ImageSnap. Then resizing uses a tool built into the Mac called SIPS. I have to assume that other platforms have similar tools. So now I have an image and I can base64 encode it. When you use models like Gemma 3, they expect any images supplied to them to be base64 encoded, which is simply a way to encode a binary file as text. And then process image just bundles all those things up into one function. Send image to webhook is a function that prepares a body and then uses fetch to send it to a URL and return the response. This is used for the first image as well as all the other images. After the first image, I actually send two images with each request and then have the model talk about what's new in the image. Get final response sends the full text and just asks the model to complete the story. There isn't really anything about the prompts in this app. This is just sending the images and the text to N8N. Now at any point, if I press any key, it stops and requests the final response. So that's what wait for key press is for. So now we get to the main function. I get the first image and send that to narrate first which is one of my webhooks in N8N. And then it spits out the response. And then it sets the previous image to this image and the previous text to the current text. So now it goes into a loop. It gets a new image and sends both images and the previous text to the narrate subsequent webhook and then spits out the response. It sets the previous text to what it just outputted and sets the previous image to the most recent image and adds the recent text to the full text, and then goes back to the start of the loop. Then, when I press a key, it sends all that text to the final response webhook and outputs that text. That's the client CLI. Now, because I have tasks defined in dino.json, I can call dino task run to run it, or dino task compile to put out a compiled executable I called NML that anyone with a Mac can run as is without even needing TypeScript or Dino installed. This app was specifically written for my Mac, and so that's why it's specifically gonna run on a Mac. I think this being able to compile and then share it with others without having to require Dino or TypeScript installed is probably the biggest reason I never liked using Python. So let's move over to N8N. So I have a workflow there called Narrate My Life. In it, I have three webhooks, narrate first, narrate subsequent, and final response. Each is configured to respond with the respond to webhook node. Each starts their own flow, and each of those required a slightly different approach. I'll start with the final response since that was the easiest one. So the webhook leads to a basic LLM chain. The webhook takes a single parameter called all text, and that's being fed into the prompt. So here's the prompt up top and the placeholder for the text from the webhook. Connected to the chain is the Olama chat model. I used a credential to point it to my Big Boy server. Big Boy is just the name I assigned to a server with tail scale. Then I picked Gemma 3 27B as the model. I want the model to stay alive for 50 minutes and have a context length of 32K. That's gonna respond with a lot more information than I need. So I then have my respond to webhook to output the JSON that I define with text equal to JSON.text. So that was the easy one. Now let's look at narrate first. The webhook node is essentially the same thing. 
But if we look at the basic LLM chain, we see that we can add images by adding a new user prompt. But the only choices are image binary or image URL. I really wish I could add image base64, since that's what models work with, but I can't. And then it needs the field name for the image data. Although it doesn't explain this here or in any of the documentation, this field cannot be in the JSON you submitted to the webhook. This needs to be a file. This is such a confusing way to work. So let's go back to the node before this on this flow, convert to file. Here I was able to select move base64 string to file, specify the field with the base64 string, and the field I want to put it in. Now we can go back to the LLM chain, and now the image makes sense. For the prompt, I just have the text I used for the start. The respond to webhook node is pretty much the same as we had for the final flow. Now let's look at the subsequent flow. I tried to do this the same way as the first flow, but I hit a problem that it turns out lots of others on the forums have hit in the past. You can't deal with more than one image binary being sent to at least this node. That was super frustrating. So I had to do a standard HTTP request for this one. It's not that hard. So set the method to post and the URL for the Olama server. Then set the body as JSON. At first, I tried using fields below, but quickly hit a problem. For images, you need to supply an array of your base64 encoded strings. But if you add the two placeholders into the text field, N8N will wrap it in quotes. You don't supply a string, but an array of strings, so that fails. So set the dropdown to using JSON and write out the full JSON. Here you can see the full JSON that I used. You want to make sure you escape any new lines to get valid JSON. The JSON for the respond to webhook has to be a little bit different on here because the response from the LLM is different. But that's it. If I were doing this again, I would skip N8N. The only thing it gave me was extra work to do. The main benefit of N8N for me is managing authentication to various services and for management of applications months after development. But in this case, I had to write an app to handle capturing the camera anyway, and then use fetch to send the images to N8N. But I should have just done the fetch straight to Olama and saved myself the extra dependency. But using N8N can just be fun. Okay, so how about the rest of this? My laptop camera is being used by the app, so I also recorded the same scene from my iPhone resting on my laptop. It was just the camera I had available. Then I brought that into Final Cut, and I copied the text from my app and pasted it into the UI on 11 Labs, then we generated the audio and downloaded that. Of Homo Finally, I edited Seemingly the video well. to put the contents together. I think it turned out pretty well. So what do you think? Are you ready to make your own documentary? Or do you have another concept in mind for using multiple images with Olama? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.